All right, so my name is Catherine Opal, for those of you who don't know me, and I work at Armstrong. Um, I teach Algebra 2 for 9th and 10th graders, and then I teach Intro to Statistics, which is mainly 12th graders, and as well as AP Statistics, which is mainly 12th graders. So my technology journey started a couple years ago, actually, because I um, can't stand going over questions in AP statistics. So if anyone is familiar with statistics, the problems are pretty intensive. They take a long time to go over. And what I would find is a lot of people would do them and then some people wouldn't do them. And then you get the kids who really know how to do it and they're like, this is just wasting my time. And then you get the kids who haven't attempted it, which is also like kind of a waste of time in my opinion as well because I want the kids to actually attempt it before we go through the question. So what I started was two years ago was I um, had kids submit questions on Schoology and then I started my YouTube channel and I used an app called Doserai and I would go through the questions online and or on, on my iPad and then I would post them to YouTube and then I would put it on Schoology like the questions are posted. So it was my way of kind of flipping the classroom, saving some time so for some more um, enrichment in class and activities rather than spending the time on questions in class. So that's kind of where I started two years ago. And then last summer, Johanna Stout and I worked on our Algebra 2 course. So that kind of spread into, okay, I'm interested in this stuff. Where do I go from here? And Johanna and I start, um, started, and we decided to start with our Algebra 2 course. So this is kind of what I wanted to cover with you guys real quick. Um, and we found a problem in Algebra 2 that kids were turning in homework, but they were turning it in just to pass up a piece of paper for points. And we felt like they weren't really reflecting on, hey, this is similar to a sport or a music class. Like, you need to be practicing this right, so when we play the game, we're going to win, right? And so they were just, blah, 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 there you go, Miss Opal. Not all, but a lot of kids, too many for our comfort. So what we did is we decided that over the summer we wanted to work on through technology, trying to gauge more students by assessing in a variety of forms. So that would be, we wanted in our units to have four things for sure. Individual entrance slips, whether it be on Schoology or paper and pencil. Homework slash homework quizzes. And what we focused on there was like banked questions. So we took all the homework and then we literally embedded it in a Schoology bank of questions and we'd pop out like three questions. And each kid would get different types of questions just to prevent cheating. And then they could try it again if they wanted and three different questions might pop up. Um, partner quizzes and then we looked for some sort of Kahoot game or activity and we really like, um, Jake I think you mentioned Desmos and Lindsay Krebs and I also use Desmos quite a bit as some sort of enriching activity. Um, so how we started that last year is I really suggest like just kind of getting your game plan and we took our like unit summary and I just highlighted okay here's where we're going to try to embed things from either Schoology, paper, pencil and again we tried to shoot for four different th things throughout our unit. So where we started with technology was we looked at our resources. So there's five different teachers that teach Algebra 2. And our goal was, was we wanted to make our resources where um, Mr. Irwin could come in and just shoot everything over to his class. It was all set up for him. Um, we wanted it, our goal was organization through technology. That was a big goal of ours. So we started everything. We, you can see up here we have our learning objectives. We have learning target videos. And then we have our chapters. And then each chapter, what we did is we set it up where we would have homework, assessments, and then videos. And so we worked on then using that unit drive that I showed you earlier. Um, so this one, we took this, and then we tried to make it as a Schoology course, if that makes sense. So this is what a homework folder would be. It would be the homework in there as PDFs. And eventually we changed it to the actual assignment and we embedded the PDF in there. And then what, um, when kids would open up the assessments, we had all of our Schoology quizzes that we created over the summer in there. And again, it was linked to that paper document. So teachers knew, oh, Schoology quiz, 1.3 homework check. And then they could go there and it would match up. We tried to use the exact language that we had on Schoology in our paper like unit summary as well. So for example, if Jim Irwin or whoever else who wasn't part of it, they can know, okay, we're doing this, it matches exactly in Schoology, okay? Um, and one thing, I, I am a big advocate of the banked questions in Schoology, so if anyone like at Armstrong needs help with that, I love the bank because it gets the kids so it's not just retrying the same problem. <laughs> 
but if it's solving a linear equation, it's a different linear equation. It's not the exact um, problem, and it's really easy to set up, um, and that's all within your Schoology there. And then finally, the videos. So one thing, this was something that kind of evolved over time. We wanted a place if a student needed some extra help, they could click and we label their videos by the learning target. So they would click on the learning target um, and up would pop a video and that would help. And I did this with my AP Stats class as well and I would get kids, I think this was the most useful things for students. Um, I would get kids who would say, Miss Opal, I binge watched the videos last night to prepare for the test. I'm ready. So I really got a lot of good feedback about the videos. How did it evolve over the school year? Hopefully I'm not talking too fast, but I wanted to show you a lot. Um, one thing that really evolved through the school year were the videos, which I kind of talked about, and we did it by learning targets. Um, the next thing was my YouTube channel. I'm a huge advocate of the YouTube. Um, I actually, it ended up evolving where I found a lot of great resources, math teachers online, but I would post my notes, right? So if a student was gone, here's your notes. However, I found that writing down the notes from the math assignment, it didn't necessarily click. So I ended up using Screencast-O-Matic during my lectures and I would video my notes. And Screencast-O-Matic's great because you can pause it. So for example, the way I try to teach is we'll have some kind of opener, questions, whatever. I'll do the lecture and in my lecture I try to embed, like try it on your own. I'm gonna walk around and see if you have questions. So I'd pause the Screencast-O-Matic, they're doing the questions, walk around, back to the lecture, hit play, we're back at it. So it won't waste a lot of time. Um, I got a lot of really good feedback on that just because now instead of just copying the notes, they're hearing my voice, they're copying it in the notebook. And it was, I think, really helpful. Um, the YouTube channel by the end of the year evolved to making a playlist, which I really, really liked. And Sean had told us about the playlist at the beginning of the year. And I'm a real practical, like I can't bite off more than I chew. We're all really busy people. Like I have two little kids at home. I don't wanna be spending all my time on this. So it was a, it's really been a process for me. And like I said, it started two years ago. So what's really nice about this, so this one's the unit on rational expressions and equations. And this is literally every lecture I had in my class. Okay, and it's as a playlist, so kids could watch the playlist totally before a test, or they could just pick the one that they're struggling on, and it's all there in one folder, rather than searching through all my videos to look for it. Because I have 131 videos now, so that would be over two years, remember? So that would be a lot to look for. So now it's all right there for them. So I really, really, really encourage you to make a playlist for your different classes. So I teach different, three different classes. So that's gonna be kind of my goal next year. Um, so this is just an example, like this is just a screenshot of, hey, this is some of my smart notes. And just so you can see, you just click. And so the kids don't see me teaching through Screencast-O-Matic. I, I actually got a snowball ice and I have it in my room and then I just talk. It picks up my voice nice and clear. Um, and then they see my smart notes as they're watching the video. So that's just like a first page of my smart notes. So that's what they would see. And then they hear my voice talking through it. Um, one thing also, if you're making Schoology quizzes, I learned this throughout the year as well from Kathy Neeland, is the feedback button. I would write this down if you give multiple choice or if you te teach an AP stats class or any kind of AP class, I'm sorry. So this is just showing, this is a screenshot from the edit page of editing the problem. And there's this little button here, um, feedback, and you click on it. And so what I would do is they pick A, B, C, D, or E. So I screenshot them from the AP site because I don't want to retype all the problems. It's super easy to just click a picture and you can import the picture into a Schoology quiz. It's very easy. I'm not someone who's like wants to spend a lot of time on this stuff. I wouldn't do it if it wasn't manageable for me. And it has the A, B, C, D, E questions all ready for me. And then I just put choice one, A, B, C, D, and they match it up. And now I have my basic feedback, right? And the basic feedback, and it's, if you notice, it's the same for both ones. So if they get an incorrect response, I put remember, a residual is blah, blah, blah. And they can write that down. And I expect them to keep a note, notes of things to remember, like things they got wrong. And now also in the correct response, I put the same thing. 
because I put, did you guess, question mark? Remember, a residual is this, because with multiple choice, you do get kids who are guessing. So I'm really trying to teach them to reflect. Am I doing this right? Did I guess? Um, so on and so forth. And that's been extremely helpful. And over time, it's evolved where I have actually, you can import a video. So if a kid gets it wrong, I need videos. And it takes a lot of time, but I won't do it if it wasn't worthwhile. And I didn't get good feedback from the students. There will be a video on some of those feedback. So if the kid got it wrong, they can click on it, they watch the video, they write it down in their notebook, here's what I did wrong, and I do let them redo it later in the AP class. Hopefully I'm not going too fast with you. I'm... Can I take a oh, yeah. So when you click in that feedback box, do you just get a full editor that pops up? Yeah, yeah, the whole RTF editor, yep, so you can import videos, there's a bunch of stuff that you can do in there. Yes, 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 it's awesome. Like that has just been so useful to me because I don't necessarily have time to go through every single question in AP stats to say, oh, 20 people got this wrong, but there's no time. And what I love about the analytics too is you can see what people are clicking on. So you know if people are using this option, but I would definitely suggest that. Um, unfortunately, it only works for like multiple choice or matching, it doesn't work for um, fill in the blank. So if you use fill in the blank, that option doesn't work, unfortunately. Hopefully it will in the future. Um, and then this summer, what Lindsay and I are planning to do is we're gonna rearrange things a little bit. We don't use the book anymore. So saying like chapter one doesn't mean anything to the students. So we're gonna rearrange it. This is my statistics one that I've already started by unit. So unit one, intro to data, right? And then they'll click on that, and the big thing is, is we want a one-stop shop. So one thing we noticed was if a student was gone, they'd say, Miss Wolpa, I was gone. I'm like, okay, find the notes or find the video on School Day. Well, they didn't necessarily know where in School Day, even though it was very organized. It's like, okay, the video was in one folder, the notes was in another folder, the homework was in another folder. So talking to Johanna Stout, she t um, tutors a lot of people in Minnetonka. She was telling us this is how they do it in Minnetonka, and we found this very beneficial, or we thought about it, and we were like, this could be very beneficial to the students. And so now that I've been through it a couple times, it may seem overwhelming or like reinventing the wheel, but now that I feel really comfortable in Schoology, it doesn't take that much time. Um, so if you open up Unit 1, this is what the students would see. And the goal is then is I'll move, this is all in the resources, I'll move it over to my class, and where it says day one, instead of day one, it will have the actual date. So let's say a student's gone on day three. They can click on day three, and then in it, they will see what we did for the day. So there'll be an agenda, right? There'll be the assignment. There'll be a Schoology quiz or whatever else we did for the day. And the goal is, is that we'll have a video in there from the day. Um, a blank set of notes, a filled out set of notes, and then we're gonna try to look for more enriching activities through the use of Desmos, um, task cards, cahoots, to add in there as well. So a student, when they're gone, they click on it, it's all right there rather than having to click in different folders. I talked really fast, but I just wanted to show how my journeys um, kind of evolved over time and really that it is just like a step-by-step -step journey. Don't try to bite off more than you can chew. So, any questions? This year when you go through the same curriculum again, yep. are you going to just post the old video you already have? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, so, right now, I'm just going to post the old video that I had, or Lindsay and I, if there's no video, we're going to make our own video. And then, obviously, I've gotten better at this over time. So, like, I used to post the notes from the year before, but I'd always say, you guys, I, each year I get a little bit better. So, just know that you know, if you're copying the notes from last year, they may be a little bit different. So I'm gonna keep continuing to like tape my um, classes and uploading those videos. And so hopefully that will also evolve over time. But for now, we'll kind of just put that in there. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Thank you guys so much. Again, sorry, I kind of was speedy through it. So.